I just need to show you this. I figured for the story I'm about to tell that this is a highly appropriate shirt. Uh, I did this just for you guys. I want you to get a load of this. That's right. I coordinate my clothing to my storytelling. So while I was still finished my undergrad degree in college, I actually got to be a teaching assistant for some of the introductory chemistry labs. For those of you who don't know, teaching assistants are something that gets used in a lot of like lab classes and like extra study sessions for some of your college courses uh, when you need some extra instruction but professors aren't always available. They're usually graduate students. In very rare cases, they'll use undergrads for whatever reason. Uh, in the case of the chemistry department, we needed to have more chemistry lab sections and they just did not have any more grad students. So I was actually doing really well in the department. I'd won a couple scholarships and I was already doing work for other professors like grading papers and whatnot. So they approached me and said, hey, we need somebody. Are you willing to do it? And I went, sure, because, you know, why not? I'm in college and I want money. And at that time I thought I was going to be teaching. I was going into teaching and that went away, but that's a story for another time. But it was something I thought would be a really cool experience and it kind of be fun because I always enjoyed teaching people things. I already did tutoring and things like that. What that meant was I gave a lecture once a week and then for two sections every week for a total of four semesters, I was in charge of 30 people who really didn't want to be there who were playing with chemicals. So that was really exciting and I got some good stories out of it. Um, one of my favorite stories, it was the very first semester I was doing the teaching, and I did not actually take the introductory chemistry class at my university. I had come in with credit essentially from high school that allowed me to skip it. I had already proven that I was good enough at chemistry that I didn't need to go through the basics again. So my first time going through this lab was with the students I was teaching. And so we were both kind of learning it together, but I, you know, at least understood what was happening, even if I hadn't seen it before. So. One of the first labs that we had, we there were two different experiments going on at the same time. And half the room is doing something that involves essentially making hydrogen gas. And the other side of the room was playing with propane torches. Flammable gas, fire. This is a bunch of college freshmen at eight in the morning, most of which don't care to be there. I was terrified going into it. I was like, there's no way this is gonna end well. So we get to the class, everything's actually going okay. It's, it goes from eight to like 10.50 or something of weird, obnoxious time like that. And I have a class of my own at 11. And it gets to 10.30 and I'm going, okay, so I'm gonna be late to my class because everything's running really behind, but at least nothing terrible has happened. I don't know if you guys have the same phenomenon, but for me, when I say things that are good out loud, the universe hears me and decides it has to fix that. And I made the mistake of kind of saying that, you know, out loud in my head, you know, that kind of thing, actually acknowledging that things were going well. So very shortly after this thought has materialized, I hear a guy behind me going, oh, oh no, oh no. And so I turn around and in a little fume hood is this guy's lab manual that's laying out fully on fire, on fire, just blazing. And I kind of stood there for a minute, I'm looking at it and I'm, trying to rationalize this and I'm going, this can't really be what's happening. I'm imagining a worst case scenario and if I blink a couple times, uh, it will go away and it'll just be a spill of some kind and it won't be a big deal. It did not go away. It was actually on fire. So I had to learn how to use the fire extinguisher, which was really exciting. So I put out the lab manual, which is now just kind of mostly a pile of ash. And I look at the kid and I'm like, what? Ex explain to me what happened here. It's like, well, and this is what, you know, all freshmen sound like. Well, I got really tired of holding the little button down on the torch, so I took off the safety and put it down so I could go and do other stuff. Are you serious? You, let, let's revisit all of the things you just did incorrectly here. Um, anytime you have to use the phrase turned off the safety mechanism in a chemistry lab, probably not going to end well. Uh, let's go over the fact that there's paper next to a fire, which I can't even tell you how many times I've said, make sure you don't put your paper towel or your lab manual or any of that stuff inside the hood. Uh, and then there's the whole walking away from the flame thing. What, why, why did you do this? What could you possibly have been thinking? He goes, well, I was just trying to burn the place down so that way we could get out of here and go to dinner. I'm sorry, excuse me? What did, what did you just say? His lab partner goes, I think he just asked you on a date. And the whole class goes, ooh. And I'm like, great, I'm in a middle school now. This is fantastic. I'm surrounded by 12 year olds. This is fantastic, okay. So we're trying to process what's happening here and make sure that the fire's actually out. I hear another guy behind me going, um, 
hey, Jen, um, I, I kind of have a problem. And I'm like, oh my god, what now? So I turn around, and now there's a guy who is standing in the middle of the room with his arms straight out, holding a beaker. And the beaker has a bunch of blue liquid in it, and it's foaming something gray, and it's spewing chunks of stuff, and he's doing some weird little, like, kind of, like, dance thing while he's holding this thing straight out in front of him. And I'm like, what is that? He goes, I don't know, but it's really hot. Well, put it down! Why did you bring it to me? So I thought you'd want to see it. Like, I, you can just tell me to come over there. So we get him to put it in a fume hood, and I'm trying to figure out what's actually in this thing. I assume I need to separate it, and this is an introductory chemistry lab, there's not a lot of equipment in there, so I've like MacGyvered some like separation apparatus with some like crappy paper towel, and it's that paper towel they always put in like restrooms where it's like it never actually like picks up water, it just kind of pushes it around, I don't know how that works. So it's like that kind of crappy paper towel, so I've like poured the liquid over some paper towels across another beaker with another little funnel to try to get this stuff to separate so it'll stop doing whatever the hell it's doing, and I asked the guy, I'm like, tell me exactly what you did. He's like, I don't know, I was just trying to clean out the beaker like the instructions said to. He's like, with the acid? He goes, yeah, with the acid. Did you empty the beaker before you put the acid in there? Goes, oh, oh no, I didn't. So what did I do? So now I'm like writing crap on the board. I'm like, okay, well, he had this in there, he had this in there, and I'm trying to figure out like what he could have possibly made. And the blue stuff turns out, it was just copper. When you put copper in solution, it turns blue. That's not a big deal. The foamy bit that turns out to be hydrogen sulfide, which, if you're not a chemist, is flammable and toxic, and he's been waving it around a room full of people holding propane torches. <laughs> so, so now I'm like, oh good, this is, like, there's probably wasn't a lot of it, but this is still not good. So I'm telling everybody, shut off all your torches, we're done, everyone's done, turn everything off, and, and let's just get out of the room to be on the safe side, and I will turn on all the fume hoods so that way it can ventilate, and it'll all be good. Which, in hindsight, doing a bunch of stuff that was sparking by turning on hoods, probably not the best idea, but I figured people had been flipping switches anyway, so it wasn't a big deal, and the room needed to be cleared out. So while all this is going on, the professor walks in, and he goes, how's it going? And everyone starts laughing. He's like, oh, it's that good, huh? I was like, well, would you like to see my smoldering pile of ash or my mystery substance that I figured out could actually kill everybody. And he kind of looks at me funny and I kind of give him the brief rundown. He goes, okay, well it sounds like you've got it under control over here. I'm gonna go check on the other labs and I'll be back in like 30 minutes, okay? And then he just like runs out of the room. That was my first wonderful experience with trying to teach chemistry to people who don't really give a shit about chemistry. I had plenty of other stories from my adventures there. It's probably one of my favorites. I'm um, sure I will come up with more to share with you guys some other time. That kind of gives you a little bit of background into some of my college adventures. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed telling the story. <laughs>